again. I'm sharing my kitchen today. Um, this is before pictures that I was wanting to just give you an idea of what we were working with when we bought our 1998 Gala Model mobile home. There was a lot of changes that we made. My husband and I decided to gut this kitchen. Uh, the cabinets were swollen. The like wasn't even exactly paintable drawers were all busted out the cabinets were an odd size um there was a lot of interior damage the layout wasn't quite what we were after we somewhat duplicated the layout but made quite a few changes so here's just our gutted floor plan gutted kitchen area it was an awful mess but we decided to go ahead and move the back door here and remove two windows, replacing a smaller window back in the office and creating this long wall by the back door. And here we're coming in with our vinyl plank flooring. We got it at a really reasonable price, very high contrast and color variation, lots of like bluish undertones. So I chose this color agreeable gray as opposed to the repost just to bring in a little bit of warmth. Um, we went ahead and worked with the electrical that was in place. You can see here is the light switch that was for all the lighting currently in the kitchen. Not the most ideal spot, but we cut in four inch round puck light holes, about 16 inches from all the perimeters of the walls because about 12 inches is your upper cabinet depth and you want a light to fall between you and your cabinet. So we just used that previous power and pulled new lines to all the new pucks, going from just two lights to eight, including the mudroom area. As you can see, we did not fiddle with that beautiful wallpaper that was in the kitchen area. We do plan on surfacing that with something. Before cabinet install, we resurfaced and textured all our walls and installed our seamless vinyl flooring. I built these awesome corbels and I was planning to sell them in a booth I had for a little while and realized I knew right where they needed to go. The seam where the mobiles met was just the perfect place for them to add some charm. Back before lumber prices exploded, I built this set of corbels for only $15 and they're quite large at around two feet. And it's cabinet day. I felt like we waited for this day forever, but the cabinet maker is getting everything installed, doors leveled. You can see the cabinets here in their raw state and we did get paint grade cabinets which lowers cost and um, we didn't fiddle with that wallpaper because we intend to install shiplap so here's our first piece going up we did go ahead and set up a cutting station in the living room and we did pre-stain the hood and pre-paint the shiplap so those cracks of the shiplap were painted well since I had the choice, I wanted the interiors of the cabinets to stay wood. So here the kitchen is prepped and we go ahead and tape the inside and paper the inside of the cabinets off. After we had already thrown on a coat of poly, we sanded and did another coat of poly. So my husband's coming in with the white paint and getting the shiplap sprayed again and um, spraying the cabinets. Now we did a PVA primer because we had it from the drywall and went ahead and just did a satin interior as the top coat. I wish we would have used better quality paint. We used what we had on hand because we were trying to be budget conscious since all of the investment went into the cabinets themselves. But, ugh, my son's in the fridge. A paint booth set up and everything. Nothing stops him from being in the fridge. So you see here, this is just us painting bases. We pulled doors off and we drill holes into the opposite end of the doors that you can't see. And we hang them with coffee cup hangers on like clothes hangers. And that's how we get our doors sprayed and we just let them hang dry. If I would have known that I was going to have a YouTube channel, I would have taken more photos and videos and better quality ones. But this is move-in day. We did not have a stove. We did not have running water. We did not have a sink cut in. We used wood counters from the cabinet maker. Um, didn't have money for laminate. We just made do. We even did dishes in the bathtub. Yes, we did. You do what you gotta do. I landed this beautiful door at the vintage market I had my booth at and we knew we wanted a barn door for our pantry so we had drywalled it out and chose to not case it to have it look more finished. We got this door for a really great price and I just clear coated it to hold those chips in place. 
Months later, it's laminate day. We could finally afford it. So we have it laid out here to get it to lay flat and the cabinet maker let us use his tools to get the job done. How awesome is that? So we sanded down the wood counters cause we did use them and kind of probably, you know, made some messes and went ahead and did the adhesive and did the laminate. Now the edges aren't quite a hundred percent, not as well as he would have done it, but our counters only cost us not even $400. I ordered brackets on Amazon and used a two by 12 for this shelf above the coffee area. And the sinks cut in and the cabinet hardware is installed. I like the boldness that the hardware adds. It's really nice. But we have our nice faux marble counters with the rounded front, which elevates that basic laminate look. But a big part of our kitchen is our back door area. It's been many things, and one of my favorites was the church pew, but it was always covered in stuff. I built this beautiful shelf above it, and it now lives at my pastor's house looking lovely, as you can see. But for me, didn't work. Here's a little DIY of our current locker situation. This is a lot of function for $130, but it's changed yet again. It's true, there's so much to love here. There is a lot of storage. And I love this year, I made a beautiful fall display. I went all out. Usually I'm fairly minimalistic, but I did a lot of hand-painted pumpkins to kind of make them look heirloom and just went all out. But overall, I struggle with the open cubby, so there's some changes coming but let's celebrate. The time has finally come where we have filled our fridge cubby with two beautiful matching fridges. You guys are little plastic pulling tools. Elijah. I landed some acrylic organization on sale and collected some here and there from TJ Maxx and some as gifts. And I, we initially moved the old fridge out. I cleaned it out and we gifted it. And I'm going through all of what we just plopped in one fridge. And I'm trying to get things organized. And I pulled out the label maker to get sauces, condiments, leftovers, meats, cheeses, dairy. I just kind of made general topics just to help us know what's what and where things go. It's nice to have so much space, I must say. I was overall ashamed when I was going through it that yes, I had three bags of cheese in my old fridge, three. It just seems so wasteful, like we wouldn't see things in the fridge and we would rebuy it. And I oh know, granted we used all that cheese for sure, but this organization is amazing. I, I don't deserve it. I'm so glad we did plan for it. I'm just going through organizing snacks and using these acrylic organizers. Um, I kind of have, my right fridge is dairy, um, meats to be prepared, produce, things like that. Our left fridge seems to be condiments, sauces, leftovers, and meats and cheeses. So here's just an overview of kind of how we've got things done. Um, you can see I have meats, always take your meats, your thawing or whatever, put it in a container. 
that's what leaks all over your fridge and makes the disaster. It's awful. I've learned the hard way. My sister gifted me this little egg holder. It sorts them and rolls them forward. And I do have an additional acrylic one for like hard boiled eggs because we always have so many. I was able to use this Lazy Susan for all of our pickles and relishes and um, okra, things like that. You can spin it and take things out easily. So that's a really nice option. Otherwise, the organization, labeling, knowing where things go, not having to stand on our heads. It's just been God sent. Very grateful. So here's just an overview of this first fridge. We call the right fridge the knock-knock fridge, and this fridge to the left is the no-knock fridge. It's actually completely different fridges. The left one here is a counter depth, so it's a little shallower, but has a lot more space because it doesn't have the indoor ice maker. And the right fridge here, I'm able to knock, see what's inside, but I always know it's my creamer, ready for my coffee station right next door. I must say I love this feature though. I really like that the two fridges have a similar look, but different features. Overall, we got these from a Benton Dent discount store. Um, retail, this right fridge was 3,700 and we didn't even pay that for the two. You could see the dents on the handles there. They even gave us new ones. How awesome is that? I bought this organizer on Amazon. I wanted to make sense of my Ziploc bag situation. I like that this wood holder can be hung. So let's say you have more room in a pantry or in the back of a cabinet door. It's just a great alternative. I would say it's not that that cheap. I think it was 40, 50, I'm not sure, but um, definitely a good organization tool. Something worth saving up for, you know, just as that, just little extra kitchen accessory. Um, better than all those boxes and not being able to pull them out easily. We took our Sam's Saran Wrap and went ahead and taped the cutter onto the side of the drawer. It fit in there perfectly. So we're able to just open the drawer, run that plastic out and pull it. It's fantastic. Super genius moment there. My old um, divider didn't work. So I used this acrylic little holder for my spatulas. And here's extra utensils just with Dollar Tree holders, organizer for the silverware. And I'm gonna go ahead and tackle my Tupperware area. I have this glass Tupperware. When we bought our house and I was buying things for it, I said, no more crazy Tupperware. I am gonna go get a nice set. So I got two sets from Sam's, glass sets with the um, snap-on lids. It wasn't even that bad. Why I waited that long, I'm not sure, but getting my pans and Tupperware organized. See, you can see a little hint of the wallpaper peeking out back there. Um, <laughs> it's, there's gotta be a little reminder somewhere of what our house was, and there it is. I went ahead and threw the lids in that acrylic holder because it's nice and tall. That way I'm not having to, you know, have them laying down, taking up tons of wasted space like it was. I know um, minimalists like organizing people say, put your lids on your Tupperware. Uh, I feel like this works for me. So that's done. Pans looking fantastic. I'm really happy with getting a little bit of order here because <laughs> it's kind of been a mess. We have five kids learning kitchen responsibilities and putting things away and putting it where it belongs. Eek, I know. Above the Tupperware to the left of the stove is our cookbooks, medicines, mixing bowls. I have a Pyrex and a plastic set, pitchers, serveware up top that I don't use often. No cute glass labeled spice jars here. This is my reality, you know, go big or go home. Just below the spices to the right of the stove is our pots and pans. And here in the top shelf, I have our saute pans to the left and our deeper dish pans to the right. And on the bottom shelf, we go ahead and keep our pots. Oh, old stainless steel set we got when we got married. Strainer and an accordion holder from Ikea to hold our lids. Okay, so let's talk appliance pantry. This is the tall cabinet we have installed here with a lot of pull-out drawer shelving and upper shelves with some power actually in the back so that we can plug in our microwave and toaster. 
This is an area I've mentioned before that I just love. It's very functional. Um, I have my junk drawer, a lot of my extra appliances, all of our baking goods. And I love that the microwave is not on counter and or above the stove. This cabinet is huge. It's a game changer for the rest of the kitchen. My pantry is just here to the right. Um, it was something that was already existing in the mobile. We went ahead and just painted the shelving along with the kitchen cabinetry. Uh, our barn door functions so well here. And I, overall, I do intend to do a budget-friendly makeover of this space. I did build this Dollar Tree rack with over-the-door hangers and some plywood. It's nice shallow storage here on the left wall. Moving on to the drawers underneath my coffee maker, just house my cups, washcloths, and dishwashing accessories. And under here is spare food and coffees and a lot of cleaning supplies and uh, I'd say a little mess. I was gifted this beautiful coffee bean resin poured like charcuterie board. It's gorgeous. It's a sweet reminder of my friend and I love having it on display. In the uppers to the right of the kitchen sink, we have all of our drinking cups. We use ball jars for drinking and our to-go cups and some spare stuff that we like. Um, to the right of the dishwasher here, I keep a lot of our travel mugs, our Dutch oven, a high chair we assemble for the babies that visit, and some of our cup accessories. Overall, our kitchen's far from together. I mean, we have an unfinished hood, we have like scuffed hoverboard. <laughs> cabinet that need new painting discoloration from the alder the cracked caulking i mean if you stop and remember what the kitchen was and what it's become you cannot nitpick it to death but i'm overall just so grateful for this space it is so much more than i could ask for in this mobile home but i'm so glad to share this with you and i look forward to sharing more with you in the next video bye